Ik neem eerst mijn awesome kruid. Dat is gewoon ik zeg. Ik zit daar als een extra. En dan staan ook op om te gaan praten als ik opgewonden heb. Oké. Okay. So, as we are from the free state, so, but let's keep it English. Um, seeing as we're in the Cape, although we're a bit unsure of which side of the mountain we're at. at. But yeah, I'm going to talk about the ASA's contribution, or ASA Bloemfontein specifically, in terms of the two observatories project that we have, that's happening in Bloemfontein currently. Um, Marty, we're going to present the talk, but apparently had some other um, jobs to do, so I was his adjutant. <laughs> so here I am. Now, the two observatories, um, most of you should know or will know that there was for quite a long time, between 1930s and 70s, 75, Two active observatories in Bloemfontein, the Le Monde House Observatory in Naval Hill or Naval Hill, and then Boyden Observatory there. Le Monde House was closed down uh, mid 70s, and after some refurbishment, it was turned into a theatre theater for the arts. Um, after the contracts, I think in mid 2000s, was around their time, they didn't renew. So it was stood empty, and apparently the cat is out of the bag on the whole planetarium project. We wanted to build a planetarium at Boyden because it's a current our active science center, but the budget was also always just out of reach in terms of how quickly we can get the money, because we reach a certain stage and then inflation, budgets, technology, next limit. So with this building now standing empty, we decided, well, we now have a building that's not being used, so now we just can just put in the technology. So that project is currently midway through its phases of finalizing. So watch that space, watch the media. Um, and if people tell you it's a rumor, go on if it's a rumor until you actually see it in the media. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell people it's still a rumor. So, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to run quickly through the two observatories project. Um, also, it really helps, the center helps uh, the university and Boyden in terms of the three different components that we have. Research, public outreach, and heritage, and that is also our main focus at Boyden, because we are we are still doing actively research, and we have a science center for public outreach. And in 20, 2010, at that symposium, the introductory introductions were made to the Possum Museum at Boyden as well. Um, so the research, I can't really say, or I don't really have much slides of that, but basically the way that ASA helps with our research component is to educate the public in terms of simple things like light pollution. Um, simply through ASA's contribution to, to, the, to <coughs> informing the people around Boyden <coughs> and along the Modder River. They've started using better uh, light armature or light fittings and controlling their lighting better. And now we, our skies is actually starting to get a bit darker. So we can. S it's, it's been a bit of improvement for our research capabilities. And the people start appreciating what we're doing, what we're trying to do in terms of research. Now, the rest of the talk will be the, just the two public outreach and heritage. A quick few slides on what we're doing there. So, <coughs> public outreach, there's two components. One is general public, open sky presentations. You should actually, some of you should remember this. This is the previous symposium that was held at Boyden. Um, mid 2000, some I can't remember which one, 2004, 2006. I think 2004. Anyway, um, but yeah, 
um, schools outreach as well. Um, we have open evenings that also runs once every quarter. We don't have enough people and enough time to actually do it once a week. Although that, though that sh would have been preferred in terms of open evenings. But we do have school outreaches that we have projects that run these three nights on average throughout the year, three nights per week. We have schools there. Sometimes you have small schools of 20 to 30 uh, learners. Sometimes they arrive with three bus loads full of school children. They tell, tell you, listen, um, it should have been one bus, but they just arrived and we couldn't say no. So here's three buses and you have two people that has to handle all 300 students. <laughs> so then it becomes a bit of a challenge. But in terms of the public outreach way, as I helped, or as, as I has contributed, is in refurbishment of this old Nishimura 16-inch telescope um, from a Cassegrain system to a Newtonian. There is a new fittings. And currently it's got a quite a nice, we bought some very nice wide angle eyepieces for this. And now you can see quite beautiful pieces of the nice sky. Because the thing is the old 13 inch that we're currently actively using is getting old to the stage where you actually want to kind of, you, you're starting to feel sorry for it. You want to, it's already 120 plus years old, so you kind of want to use it for a bit more exclusively. And this one that's got a bit younger and can still take the punch, kind of start to turn this into the workhorse at the Boyden Observatory. Also, we did uh, interact with the uh, uh, university, and they were also helped because we such a small group in terms of the astrophysics people, uh, uh, astronomers, uh, professionals. The amateurs or the other people can help us in getting some hands-on or manakrak the people involved during stuff like even the university's outreach programs, UFS 101, which I don't know if you've, you have heard of it, but it's a new program that the university is running and it's all students have to go through this thing and the subjects involved is stuff like astronomy, philosophy, um, science, political science, all of them so that they get a short two-day course or one-month course on crash courses in these different concepts so that they you broaden their minds a bit so you don't just have these narrow thoughts. So this was the uh, astronomy, astronomy outreach bit of this UFS 101 where the Bloemfontein Center was contributed quite a lot to, to help with this whole program, program because we had to push through 2,000 students in two days through this whole thing and then the Saturday uh, it, there was a strong fear for general public of Bloemfontein as well we got something like 500 or 600 people families and stuff came through so that was quite, quite a nice outreach bit as well um, for those of you who know Tinas and Mary he, we have that, had this, that old lens um, forgot where that lens came from but he put that eyepiece at the focal distance so that you can get that see a nice image through that old lens which is 100 years plus old so with that lens connecting to the heritage project the museum project um, we had the launch of the Le Montasse exhibition by Prof. Patrick Seitzer uh, he is also a satellite and space debris hunter. Um, but the reason why I include this, or this was included, because that guy there, Franz Hiemann, is a very active uh, member of the club in terms of the heritage and the museum project. Because he helped design uh, that model or the plans for that model of the Ultimate Hasi telescope 
we had no plans. So he went to the physical tubes that were still at the uh, Brandweer Museum in Bloemfontein, measured that up, the old uh, uh, foot piece, and from images, he designed this, redesigned this whole thing, and then we could have could make that model through rapid prototyping, 3D, three dimensional modeling techniques. Um, so he did quite a job for us there. And you can see there's quite some detail in that model. You just actually we get quite a few wow effects from people that see this. Um, there's some other old equipment still in boxes that still needs the cases made, exhibition cases, cases made. Um, the, we have both Mars cameras, for example, that was fitted on that old telescope. Uh, we want to you know, finalize in stages of actually planning the cases so that they can get the full glory. And part of this is also refurbishment and, um, what do you call it, renovation. Sorry, I'm Afrikaans. Um, of old telescopes. Now, if you look at this image, this is, of course, the used brass and not, um, actually, it was not brass per se, it was also actually a kind of, what's it, in the old days, um, bronze. Bronze. bronze, yeah. So, you can't use brass so to clean these things. And some of the people that had some of these old stuff said, well, it looks like brass. Let's clean it with brass so. And it's actually very bad for this old uh, 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 bronze stuff. So he uses used the correct techniques to clean it. That is just clean. That isn't even um, a bit more rough. It's just purely by cleaning it using the correct techniques. And he, if you look at old, if, if you've seen old uh, uh, bronze stuff, it doesn't look like this. This thing is over 100 years old and it looks like brand new. So he's, he does quite a good work for us da there. That is the final telescope that was on that Nishimura 16 inch that he also did some renovations. He's on it now. So. That is where we're currently active with. Um, also, currently, one of our members is redesigning our web, web page as a bfn.co.za. So, watch that space. Um, and I think that's about it for the small amount of time I had. So, let's go drink some tea. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I'm taking your joke now. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions? One right in the back. Yes. yes. Do you need to get special permission for those rather vicious looking green lasers that you've got there shining in the sky? Yeah, um, the people that do use them at Boyden are all of them qualified safety officers or laser technicians. Um, I personally do have a safety certificate for using lasers from the National Laser Center. So, and uh, I can then, therefore, other people that I know how to use lasers or after I've told them this is how you use them, they are allowed to use them at Boyden. But if a general guy from the public writes and check my laser, I tell him, listen, you either put that away or I take it away. Yeah. So that is how we handle the whole problem of green lasers around Bloemfontein. Because there was, a, I think it was this year, there was actually a father, son, and their friend was arrested in Bloemfontein for playing around with a laser around the airport region, yeah. which is just because. Yeah. They are going to cause problems for us because we use it as a tool. And they, they are tools using it. <laughs> if I can put it that way. Is there a question there in the end? I just wanted to mention the old pirate telescopes you still have. 
Um, the, we have the 13-inch clock reflector, refractor and the 8-inch on it. And the Metcalf, 10-inch Metcalf is still there. Um, the Metcalf is currently actually looking at putting a tracker motor back onto it because that tracker motor was removed to be used on another telescope. So it's the, the mount is still there, we can just put it back and we can start using that again because it has got such a nice, wonderful field, wide field for cluster specifically. And the 60 inches active. So those are the three main ones. And then it's the small, smaller finer scopes and stuff like that. There is the, we have that Robert's telescope. We're trying to find the other one because he used two telescopes. But the one is kind of somewhere in South Africa, we presume somewhere in a garage behind some boxes. <laughs> um, and there is another one telescope. What's his name? Um, I think we, that was from, uh, given to us by someone in the Midlands region. Or, I don't know, or right, something like that. True. But, uh, yeah, but what Marty brought there, that's quite old. Actually, we presume it's the oldest telescope at Boyden, because if you look at the serial numbers and manufacturing methods, and we went and searched for it, it's around about the mid 1800s. <laughs> so that's quite quite a nice telescope as well. It's a big one. Huge. <laughs> but it's also there at Boyden. So yeah. And that's what we have, and then some smaller, interesting stuff. One thing that I might have uh, mentioned there was one of those instruments during the Le Monde Asie uh, exhibition opening was the double star uh, uh, measuring, what do you call it? Micrometer. Micrometer, yeah. Um, they had two at Le Monde Asie, but the one was taken to South America. Uh, and when it was not used there anymore, Patrick decided to take it back to Michigan. And now there's a fight between Patrick and Darby about who gets to keep the others. <laughs> My comment there, which we have at Boyden, because Patrick wants to kind of steal it away back to Michigan. <laughs> but uh, we're trying to go visit him so that we can go and steal his <laughs> back to Boyden. So, yeah. <laughs> But that's, that's an interesting little device to look at because it's very simple, but it's also very, very accurate and complicated way. Yeah. Pat, it's taken me 15 minutes to, to <laughs> practice this, but Hans is by a donkey. <laughs> by a donkey, Hans is by a grateful. <laughs> <laughs>